Hubitat, rules, automation, getting things done automatically. Whatever you want to call it, that's kind of what this is about. Now, I've had this system in my home for about two months and so far very pleased with the reliability and the service of the system. I decided to go with the Hubitat system or add this to my home because I wanted to update and just automate some of the very simple mundane tasks that happen. This tutorial will kind of take into account that you've got a little bit of experience with Hubitat. You've got your dashboard set up, you've got your basic devices, and you have some smart devices that you're capable of plugging in. To get started with Hubitat, go to your browser of choice, log into your Hubitat, and then click on apps, and you'll get over to the rule machine. Now we'll start out here with one of the more basic automations, automating something like outdoor lights. So I'll first click in the back end and you can kind of see what it is. The trigger is what's going to cause this rule to run. So in this case, it's going to be when sunset is plus 30 minutes, which today is 640 PM, it's going to run this set of actions. So that's kind of the layout of how you need to think of how to set up a rule. What's going to cause the rule to run or what's the condition, what's the logic that's going to make the rule run, then we can follow through with the set of actions. Something you also want to keep in mind, anytime you're defining a rule, be careful of using the back button on your browser. This will definitely result in broken rules and I've learned this lesson the hard way. So let's go through creating a brand new rule like the one I just showed you. To start again, cl click on apps and go to rule machine and create a new rule. And we're just going to call this one test lights. So the trigger event is whatever you want those lights to turn on. Sunset in this case, now typically around 30 minutes after sunset is usually when it's dark enough that you, people kind of start turning on outdoor lights. You can definitely do it sooner or just leave it at sunset as a default, which we'll do here. Click on done and that'll be the only trigger event we'll use. And there we can see the summary of the trigger and we can add multiple triggers. We could add, let's say a motion sensor as well under the capability if we have motion sensors installed which you see here under motion. Once you're done setting all your trigger events, you can go done with uh, trigger events and select the actions to run. So in this case, uh, we want to control a switch and we want to toggle a switch on or off and make sure you note the slider here when you're turning something on because later you have to put it the other way to turn something off. In my case, the outdoor front lights, you can delay it as well if you like and we can go done with action and there you go. At that time it's going to turn on the outdoor front lights. Now you can set this up optionally two ways. You could simply just turn the outdoor front lights on at this time and be done with it. The way I choose to do mine is by adding a delay or a wait and we can delay actions or we can wait for events in the case of a, this one a certain time. So let's say we always know we are going to bed at I don't know 23.15 Oh yes, and it's p.m. so let's go 11.30 p.m. Hit the enter on your keyboard and that'll highlight the done button. So what this will do after this event is done, done with the wait event, now it's going to wait until 11.30 p.m. to do its next action. Now what action do we want? We want to control the switch now and we want to turn our lights to off. Put door front lights and we'll update that and done with the action. And there you have it. There's a simple rule to turn something on and to turn something off. Alternatively, what you can do with a rule very similar to this, we'll remove this one here, is if you take a look at something like my grow lights, which I'm not even sure how my plant lights are set up. Let's take a peek. Oh yeah, perfect. So this is another good example. So when the time is 7.30 in the morning, my grow lights or my plant room lights, they turn on you can see which ones are all listed here. My aquarium is also on here. But in this case, instead of saying wait until this time, it delays 14 hours and 30 minutes. So this is an easy way for me to do this one uh, because I know that's what the light time I want on my plants. So if I would decide to change my grow light timer to turn on at 7.30 and now I only want the 14 hour grow period or I want them to turn on eight and I still want a 14 and a half hour grow period, it's a simpler way for me to deal with that. So that's setting up a basic rule. Another thing to kind of keep in mind is you can always modify these rules and that's done very easily as well. So let's take in the case of the outdoor lights, the one that we were just looking at, and you wanted to change the sunset plus 30 minutes like I see here and you just wanted to make it 20 minutes. So you click on the trigger 
and under the edit, you highlight what you want to edit, click on that, and you can change it to, let's say, 20 minutes. Hit enter, and done. Then you click on done with this trigger event, done with the trigger events, and now it's changed to 20 minutes after sunset. These actions are gonna run. The same holds through for actions. So here's our set of actions. Let's say we wanna now turn this off at 11.15. Go to the edit action tab, click on the event that you would like to edit, and select it, and 11.15, hit enter, and we can click on done. And now our time is gonna wait till 11.15 p.m to turn those lights off. Done with weight events, done with actions, and that puts everything down. One note about this as well is if you are editing an action in between a weight delay, for example, if this was now seven o'clock and my outside lights were on, it's going to break this action because it's going to wait for the next occurrence of the trigger, otherwise known as sunset plus 20, 6.30 p.m to run and hold on for the wait event. So if you are setting up new rules, kind of keep that in mind. So if you do make a new rule, it's not going to run if it's kind of in the middle of the sequence, if that makes sense. Now onto something a little bit more with a couple more variables. My grow irrigation is a great example of this. There's three different triggers here. Now you set up the triggers the same way that you would with a different event adding the multiple triggers. So at eight o'clock, 12 or at 4 p.m. it's going to trigger this action to run and the actions that it's gonna run is my two irrigation systems are gonna turn on. It's gonna wait for 30 minutes and then it'll turn them off. So this is a great way to execute multiple actions with one rule and not have to worry about making three different rules for one action. Now, if you've been on this channel for any length of time, you hear me whine and complain about the Ecobee hold so this is how I've dealt with that. The furnace fan to circulate is a simple rule that I've set up. Now it looks a little scary if you look at it. It's not so bad. This is a conditional set of rules that I've come up with that'll set my furnace fan to circulate, uh, dissipating any heat cool spots throughout the home. And these are the parameters I've given it. So once, so in the case of my home, my theater, and my bedroom are my two hot and cold spots. And they do interchange depending on what time of day it is. So those are the two Ecobee sensors I'm using to come up with the uh, condition of when to run. So anytime the temperature of the theater room or the bedroom has changed and reports a change, it's going to run this action. Now, how to set up an action like this? Let's go through it. I'll, uh, I'll guide you through the whole process here. So we'll go to new rule machine. We'll create a new rule again. We'll just call it test because I will delete this after it's done and hit enter. And in the case of this trigger event, we want to create a new event. And we also want to create that on a temperature. Temperature sensors, we're going to be using the bedroom and the theater room, like I mentioned earlier. Those are my two hot spots. And click on the changed. Done. So anytime these things change, it's going to trigger this rule to run. So we'll go with done with triggers and we'll click on the actions we want to run. So in the case of this one, this is a conditional action and we want to make an if expression then. So we want a new condition and we're going to base this on the temperature, the temperature sensor bedroom. And here we can use some simple math formulas. So if this temperature is uh, greater than or equal to, and we want to go relative to a device and this is going to be the theater room update that and a temperature offset so in the case of this one i don't want to run constantly so i'm just going to put like a, a modifier so for me 1.3 degrees celsius is kind of where i find i'd like things to run enter the number whatever that is for you and go done with this condition so now we have the if temperature of the bedroom is greater than or equal to the theater room plus 1.3 which in this case you can see it uh, telling us what the answer is that it is false and then what? So you can do and or uh, x or d haven't played with that yet. I don't even know what that is, but we can put the variable in. So if this is the case, or if it's the inverse of this, I'd also like that furnace fan to run. So we want another new condition and temperature sensor, and we're gonna go to theater room this time. So if the theater room is greater than or equal to relative to the device of the bedroom temperature, of 1.3 so now if either of those is out by that parameter that's going to follow through 
before the then statement. So for me, I don't want this thing to endlessly loop as well. So if the furnace fan is already on, on I don't need this rule to run. So we're gonna build that in here as well. So we're gonna put an and statement in and we'll add a new condition. So if my eco be, and uh, we'll go with thermostats mode, I think it is. My eco be, nope. So we'll cancel that condition. Let's try that again. Maybe it's under mode. Let's click on mode. Nope, cancel that. Or I could just read. If the thermostat fan mode is on my Ecobee, is on auto, we'll go down with that condition. Perfect. So if either of these end up being hot or over 1.3 degrees Celsius above each other, and the fan mode of my Ecobee is auto. So if either of these things end up being a hotspot in my house, that's when the next condition is gonna run, which is turning my furnace fan on. So we're done with the if expression. We can now go to the then. And that's what that looks like. Set variable mode or file. So we wanna set mode. Nope, let's try this. Control, we wanna control the thermostat. Set the thermostat, my eco B, and we wanna change the fan setting to on and go done. Alternatively, you can also do that by running a custom action. So I'll run a custom action and we can go to thermostat and my Ecobee and the fan mode is here as well. So fan on. Either of these work, they just look a little bit different on the screen. Now that turns the furnace fan on. Now to turn the furnace fan off, you could probably do it with an else statement. For me, I like to go with and if and I'll just build another if statement that's kind of the inverse of this. So we'll go back into here, conditional actions, and if expression. Now something to keep in mind, you can also do if not statements. So if not, and what we'll do with that one is we wanna make a new condition. And what I kind of will say is once it gets to about a degree difference between the two rooms, I'm good enough with that. So that's where I'm gonna turn it off. And so we would do the same thing for those conditions. The only difference is gonna be, and we're gonna remove it. I won't, uh, won't show you guys that one because you've already seen it. We build an if statement is if we took a so if we take a look at what that looks like you have to keep in mind it has to be a little bit more logical in that case so an or you'll notice here that this is an and not an or and that's because i want both of these rooms to be within a degree of each other uh not warmer or cooler on either side for the fan to turn off not just for one to kick in so in the case of the top one only one condition has to be met for the furnace fan to turn on and in the bottom both rooms have to meet that condition for the furnace fan to turn off, if that makes sense. Now, the reason I put this last line in here, and this is something that you need to think about for making your own rules, is anytime you do something or do a function like this, if this function keeps being true, 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 uh, in the case of my Ecobee, every five minutes, I have it set to run rules. So if that's the case, every five minutes, it's going to be sending commands to your Ecobee. Now, this is not something that you want, Anytime you're building rules, this is something you kind of need to keep in the back of your mind. You don't want functions to loop infinitely and be sending commands to devices. So the failsafe in here, if I look at the fan mode of my Ecobee on, so this statement, this bottom half is looking to turn my fan off. The bottom part of the statement is looking to turn my fan on. So if my fan is already on, sorry, if my fan is on auto, it has to be on auto to turn my fan on. So once this thing has already kicked in, because its objective is to turn the fan on. It's not going to keep sending this fan on command to my Ecobee. It's only gonna send it the one time because this part of the statement doesn't qualify. The fan is no longer on auto at this point. And the same goes for the turning the fan back to auto. Once the fan is on auto, it's not going to keep running because this the temperature is balanced in the home. So this only runs if the fan is on on and the top two conditions are met. Hopefully that clarifies that for you. And this is just to keep from running excess functions on your habitat using up your CPU and memory time. And actually, I don't know if you just heard that, the fan just did kick in. One of the things that's really nice when you're building these rules is it does automatically tell you true or false. This is lit up and it lets you know what conditions are happening. So that's pretty sweet. This is kind of like the, uh, helps you troubleshoot. 
Right now you can see the temperature of the bedroom just exceeded the temperature of the theater room, which is the room that I'm in right now, and that caused the furnace fan to come on. Now it's going to run until the temperature is only a variable of one degree and then it's going to kick off. Very nice coincidence right there. I kind of eat that up. Another great way to use these kind of events is keeping your energy costs down. Block heater, for example, uses quite a bit of electricity, so having a simple rule set up is an easy way to kind of thin that out. That rule was super easy to make too on Monday, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Now this is for my wife's work schedule and Saturday, Sunday. This gives the block heater four hours to run. Uh, is it four? Yeah, four hours to run before she leaves the home and after five hours it's going to turn it off so this thing doesn't have to be on all the time hence why i'm speaking a little bit quieter actually she's upstairs right now having a sleep so i'm trying to keep my voice down here while i'm recording for you i have an automation for my furnace battery charger as well that's in here and that keeps the batteries topped up in uh, my furnace battery backup more worry about that which side is that on that's on this side i think any automations that you're going to build with Hubitat, a uh, great way to run them is through Rule Machine. Just keep in mind when you're doing it that you're applying logic to it, that you really think through them. I've built plenty of them the wrong way and that's some crash coursing on what to go through. As far as what this thing can do for you, just by going through the tour tutorials we just went through you can see there's a ton of different options here we got contacts uh, so this could be a door open close custom attributes now any smart devices will have their own variables set in and now if they're ported for it and they're set up properly you can access them here as well days of the week uh, digital switch door energy meters like there's all kinds of stuff i played around with the energy meter one for a while just because i do have some casa uh, devices now that's pretty cool I was getting it to turn off my home theater based on when the energy consumption went a little bit lower because I have a couple of phantom loads on there. So that's kind of cool. Uh, garage door humidity location endpoints. I mean, there's a ton of options on here. If you can come up with it and you can build a custom attribute for it, like the options are pretty nuts. If you can apply logic to what you want to do with this, I don't think you're going to have much difficulty finding out or finding a way to make the Hubitat run rules and automations for you. I know it's a bit of a longer video to get that all through. If you do have questions or did I miss something, whatever, when it comes to rules or setting up an automation, feel free to leave it in the comment down below. And if there's enough stuff that I'm missing or if there's stuff that I would like to play around with here with automations, I'll uh, add another video. I will be leaving another review about how I've liked this device so far and that's coming up in the future. That's going to be up on the side here in the next month or so.